I'm Patrick Tsang, Global Citizen, Investor. Join me as I talk with global influencers for their insight, wisdom, and how they overcame their own personal challenges. Sharing positivity, overcoming challenges, creating one world together. I'm Patrick Tsang, anything is possible. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Anything Is Possible. Um, I'm in the beautiful place, penthouse of my friend, Christian Angermeyer. Christian is a good friend, a new friend, but a very close friend because we share a lot of common values. He's an amazing entrepreneur, a great person with a great heart. And today I'm very happy to be here in London with you, Christian. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me and thanks for the intro. Hopefully I can uh, live up to it. So. One thing I want to get some advice from you. I want like daily hacks, mental and physical. So when we last when we last had dinner in, in London, uh, you know, we were sharing a lot of like daily habits. For me, for example, in fact, this morning, you know, off camera, we were talking about I was doing my you know daily one hour, ninety minute workout in the morning, feel refreshed, do my work. I try to only take maybe one or two meetings, and the rest of the day I try to take off when I'm in London, right? And as you know, I went to Asia recently after almost a two year break. In Hong Kong, I was there for literally less than three weeks. Every single day, I only slept four hours. Uh, I got up at 5.30, 6, did one hour workout, went to the office, and I just did back-to-back -back meetings until like midnight, every night. And then I just went home, showered, did calls, slept four hours, right? And I knew I had to do it because I had limited time. I had so many people I had to catch up from family to friends to partners to colleagues and, and different things. And we were just discussing that, you know, you look fitter today because the last two weeks you've been training more, right? So, and you have to be present, obviously, because of um, when we're too busy, we sort of forget that, oh, I want to catch that meeting, or oh, I need to do that call. What's the sort of like secret, or at least what you're trying to share in terms of the success to how to be more balanced in everyday life? Well, it's almost like if I would answer that question, then, it's, then it would sort of be a fake or a scam because that was my big problem the last years. Sure. Yeah, so which I realize now, this is why I look fitter, is like because I started training again, I did not do, I, meaning I knew that you have to do sports, meaning you have to. I want to do sports because you look better, but I also want to, because it's also healthier. So, so moderate sport every day, is one of the big things and which we talked a lot about is longevity, which is another big passion of mine, how to prolong human healthy lifespan. So I knew all of that, but over ex actually exactly what you have described about your Hong Kong trip happened to me over the last three years. I mean, we had so many opportunities. Yeah, as things were going, are going so well. Um, and I thought I need to cram it all in. Yeah, and I didn't listen to my own advice. So I was telling people like, hey, you should do sports every day yeah, because it's obviously good for you. But I didn't do it like the first half year this year, I practically didn't do any sports. So, and there was this sort of moment, yeah, um, for a personal reason, yeah, uh, f it was four weeks ago where I realized, okay, you cannot go on like that. As much as I love what I'm doing, I need to get this so, Was that an inner voice? Uh, it's something personal. So yeah. Um, so, but it was something personal. It was something very painful. Um, but sometimes you need that. And then I got to, yeah. So it was sort of this moment where you're like, okay, you need to readjust it. Not completely change, but like readjust it and get exactly what you said. Get the balance back because ultimately, again, a cheesy saying, but life is a marathon, not a sprint. Absolutely. And you know, I, I've, I've been in similar uh, challenges, Christian. Like. I think the key thing that we all know is nobody's perfect. Nobody's life is perfect. And we go up, we go down, there's hiccups. And I think, the, the, I think for me, the, the greatest uh, advice would be you have to realize and admit to yourself that something's not right and you need to go and do something about it. It's, like, it's very easy to yeah. say you have to sleep early, you have to sleep more, you know, you have to run, you have to do this. but. It's easy to talk, but if you don't do it, it's a waste of time, yeah, right? So 100%. it's all about, and it's okay to be wrong. It's okay not to run for six months. It's okay not to work out for six months, but it's the quicker that you realize that you need to change and actually take action. I think that's the most important yeah. thing. Okay, so who's your uh, role model? I, I don't have one role model because like, 
I believe in every, everybody's unique. So I rather think you can almost say you can learn from everybody something if you are um, observing and if you give people that sort of positive attitude. It could be something you learn from a taxi driver yeah? or I learned a lot from you, like I learned from colleagues. Like again, you just have to give sort of people that sort of opportunity almost to say, to, to like sort of have the expectation, hey, everybody has something yeah, which more or less they do the better most likely than I do. Like what is it? What can I learn? So I don't have one role model. Great. Um, I actually share exactly the same philosophy there. I think you can learn from anyone. Uh, I actually talk a lot about this on, on the podcast and I think it ultimately comes down to one, obviously the non-stop learning, but two, actually, it's actually a, a, a sort of a description of who you are, which is you need to have, you, you need to have so much humility and try to lower suppress the ego that you're able to learn from someone who's supposedly like more junior than you are. Because like you say, we can't know everything, but there's somebody who cooks better than you, yep. cleans better than you, does whatever better than you, and you need to be you know, nice enough to say, you know, how should I do it better? Yeah, and the ego is one of the most dangerous things in anything, because it's like sort of that part, which is like, to a certain extent we need it, because it's driving us, whatever, but if you, if it's over, um, powering the rest of everything, yeah, then uh, it's becoming dangerous, which is interesting because the ego is that part of the brain which, which is sort of literally reduced or shut down during a psychedelic trip and you get the insights because suddenly you realize when your ego is gone, which a lot of people are afraid of, they're like, yeah, what stays when my ego is gone, my sense of me? But the truth is um, that there is something, I would always say emerging or you suddenly realize that there is something there which is always there mm. it's not coming into that moment like it's always there you it's just it, hidden away it's it's, hit, it's suppressed. suppressed it's suppressed by your loud ego you can call it your soul you can sort of call it your inner voice whatever you want to call it mm. yeah but you realize there is something deeper and more wiser which you don't maybe access all the time because your ego is pounding and pounding and screaming and i i i, I remember that early in the interview you mentioned that um you know things happen for a reason so do you believe in luck? I mean, luck, I think, in English terms is sort of sounds random. So I don't believe in that. So what I believe in is that I believe that your thoughts create your reality. So it's practically the book, if anybody wants to read it, it's one of my favorite books. It's the law of attraction. Yeah? You create, I literally believe it, you create your own reality, not I think there is a time gap. This is why people don't believe in it, maybe because they say, oh, I believe like, I don't know, I don't know, like, whatever, whatever it is. And I'm not, I am not that many, but we're living in a reality where things take time to, to sort of be created. But I think your thoughts create your reality. So if you have good thoughts, positive thoughts, and if you're a good human being, I believe ultimately everything which is happening is good, even if you don't see it in the moment that it feels very bad. Yeah, it could prepare you for something or could change you. Yeah, um, uh, or there is a reason. Uh, that's one thing. And then the second thing is I always try to observe or observe or like, I think opportunities present yourself in a positive way if you're a good person, yeah? but you need to see them. And if you're too observe, uh, almost too, um, now too obsessed with yourself or whatever, you don't see it. Like if I, if I may, like my, my favorite story about that is, is, the, is the story how I discovered magic mushrooms and psychedelics because I didn't want to do it because before I learned about it, I put them in the category of bad drugs like any drug, so I didn't do it. So, and I had friends who were always telling me you should try it. I was like, look guys, you know, I'm not touching anything. But then at a dinner in 2012, uh, I was seated next to uh, a very famous neuroscientist and actually the host back then said, oh Christian, like maybe he can loosen you up when you drink a glass of alcohol. I was like, no, not gonna happen, but I'm very, very interested in the brain. So, so I spent the whole evening talking with this guy. So big shout out to Professor Rainer Spanagel for inspiring me. So I, I told, uh, we discussed the entire night about uh, the brain and how it works and which certain drugs do. And by the way, scientifically, I want to repeat it because I think drugs are so bad, not psychedelics, the other ones, they all really, really harmful for your body and for your brain. Don't do it and for your soul. Um, but at the end of the evening, he said, look, the only thing you should try is psychedelics. I was like, you're crazy. Like, like, like no. Yeah. 
but he started me sending uh, started sending me research because he actually still had worked with the legendary Albert Hoffman who had synthesized LSD had done a lot of research because all these psychedelics in the 50s and 60s they were super well researched so he started me sending that with the hope that I support his work a bit because he would say now like he never thought that could ever become medically commercially available it was a tiny niche very 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 disregarded very so so for a year he sent me that stuff and by the way some people might say well that's obvious because now if you go on netflix you have how to change your mind mm -hmm. yeah whatever then back then psychedelics were not a thing yeah so so he started sending me that stuff and um and i was reading it but still and then came this one moment where i was in the caribbean with my best friends they had magic mushrooms and they were like, want to try it. And just because I had read so much about it and just because I had met this guy randomly at this dinner, I was like, you know what? I read so much about it and they're so safe. There is no downside. Yeah, they seem to have a lot of benefits. I want to try it. And that was sort of my first trip, which then changed everything. But then I came out of it and I could just have said, oh, this was an amazing trip and it did very, very good things to me, full stop. But I came out of it and it was like, holy shit, like this needs to be available to everybody in a medical sense. Yeah, and everybody told me again, like, no, uh, this is not gonna happen, yeah. And, but I had the hunch and I saw this opportunity which presented itself so that, that I have to do it. And then I had actually, lastly, and then it comes like, I had, a, but for three years I didn't get anywhere. So it was between 2013 and end of 2017, um, I was telling some friends, but I was nervous because like it was still, it's technically a schedule one drug. So I was really just telling friends and I was thinking and talking, but everybody I talked to, every scientist said, no, Chris, it's not going to happen. It's not going to become any. So, and then I had this one trip, we'll never forget. It was December the 29th, 2016. And the entire message, and I know this sounds now as if I, it sounds so, so unbelievable, but that's how trips work. Like the entire trip was about, you learn things on a trip because these are teacher plants. And the entire trip was about Christian, don't be nervous talking about mushrooms, about psychedelics. Go out, literally talk to everybody about it. Go on TV and talk about it. Like there will just be good consequences for you sure. yeah so I came out of that and that was sort of the point where then I went all in and then we started a tie and compass whatever so so you need to read the science so to say I think so you you just mentioned the um, random uh, chance that you met the professor do you think it was random or not I believe that if you are a good human being opportunities in the form of people investment where they present yourself all the time. I think people are too consumed though with themselves to really sort of see them. And if they see them, they may be too anxious and too um, not believing in themselves enough to take them sort of. And I think the world is full of opportunities. Yeah, uh, people are just too blind for it sometimes. Sure. So um, we're both like big movie lovers. Share with us, um a movie that doesn't have to be your favorite movie, but it's a movie that you know you want to share with the audience that you like it, and you know for what reason. Inspiring, you, perhaps. Inspiring movie because, like, I have to say, my personal movie taste is very uh, cheesy because, like, I see movies as an opportunity for me to relax. Yeah. So, so the answer is, I love Marvel. Um, I love any fantasy, like. I I rather see movies as an escapism and mm. not as oh um, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. There was this question. one I'm just like yeah. uh, trying to get the name together. Everything, everywhere, all at once uh, about oh, the multiverse. Yeah. Michelle, Michelle uh, Yeoh. Yes. Who we mentioned that. Yeah. I think it's every yeah, yeah, everything yeah. everywhere well, all at once. So I think yeah. that's the title. Yeah. That was very fascinating because it shows you how different decisions in your life and I do believe in something similar to the multiverse. Yeah, lead to different sort of outcomes even if it starts with the same human being sure. okay we're getting to but at the end it's all about love that's what the movie comes back without spilling uh, the end i mean at the end of the day even from me where 
you know, I, I haven't gone into the journey of the psychedelics yet, is that I ultimately believe that the reason why we're doing the show, obviously, is your story just demonstrated anything is possible. Somebody who was like me, totally against it, you tried it, and now you're the big, you know, um, supporter. Second thing is, I think ultimately why we're doing this and why we're here is, is love. There is no other reason. There's obviously a lot of noise distractions along the way, like money, greed, politics, and so on that comes in the way. But if you look at any culture or people, religion, that's what it comes down to. And there's no other reason what else is there. Yep, right? totally agree. So what is your life uh, ethos? Well, anything is possible. And I think like, if it's, luckily we talked a lot about like sort of my younger child, because like I sometimes meet people, younger people, whatever, but in generally, and I tell them this life ethos, like, oh, anything is possible. You create your reality with your thoughts, like all of that. And then sometimes the answer is, well, but you're rich, mm. you're successful, like you have all the means, da, 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 da. So this is what it is for you, but here is me, or here is this mm. sort of underprivileged person yeah, of color or whatever. They don't have the same um, thing. And there I can say, look, no, because like I grew up like in a, yeah, in a very basic family, we didn't have wealth. Yeah, um, it was in a 90 people village and I could well have ended staying there. And by the way, maybe in another life for other people, this would have been also a great life. Sure. But, like, but like everything I have, this is what I'm very proud of, I built it myself. Yeah, um, and it shows actually anything is possible. Yeah, by the way, the same one other really like thing which shows you the power almost of, of turning adversities into, into things is like, so, um, so I'm gay and I was actually, interestingly, I was always very fine with it yeah, for myself. But when I looked at it in high school, um, when you start really thinking about it, like with 13, 14, I looked at it and I was like, this is not going to go well here. Like, it's like there was no other gay person. And by the way, back then you didn't have representation on TV. There was literally not a single gay person I could have seen on TV and not talking about in this town. And I realized for myself that if I came out, that would be the end of my social life. Yeah? So you could break over that, or you could realize how I did. I was like, well, but it's just one aspect of me. And it's not an aspect I don't like. Yeah? Again, weirdly, I was always fine with it, but I decided actively just to say, so this aspect of my life, but I have so many other aspects of my life. My, my intellect, my friends, my parents, like spirituality, there's a character so much more than one thing. I just decided purposely to pause that, yeah, because there was no reason, I always jokingly say, if there had been another super hot gay <laughs> kid in my high school, I would have been out the first day, but there wasn't. So I decided to put that aside, which did one thing as a consequence, I had way more time than other students to learn because I didn't date and dating in a normal high school life consumes a lot of time so so what did I do with the time I loved learning so I learned more yeah and I got all the grades which I which I got I got the scholarship and the scholarship brought me to the Reba Pharma guys and without the Reba Pharma guys I wouldn't sit here so ultimately me being gay is the foundation and the way I handled it is the foundation of why I'm sitting here. So maybe I'm, you could always say I'm over connecting dots, but I think that's really the truth. Like, and it's, it's, you will not have a life without adversities. That is impossible because unfortunately, it's sort of, it's part of the human condition. It's already part of the human condition. I do believe we can cure aging somewhere. And I do believe we can push life expectancy out into the hundreds, but at a certain point, you will die. And even worse, at a certain point, people you love will die yeah and if for example if we talk about our parents yeah they if life goes as planned they're gonna die before you so you have to deal with these things yeah so you have to find sort of um i don't want to say beauty because that sounds cynical because pain is not nice and mm. adversities are not nice but you have to find or you have to look at it in a way that you find or you see that great or beautiful things can come out of very painful things. But I have to remind myself about that because it's not easy in the moment. Yeah, because I think everybody who's watching and who has a tough time will 
instinctively say, well, he's still successful, he's still la 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 la. So people have that sort of, unfortunately, that it's like it's our ego, it's our core instincts to say, I'm drowning in my pain. And, and so, so it's not easy. So everything I just said sounds so easy when I say it, and it's so painful when you go through it. But I had these moments, and I just had one, yeah, and you need to remind yourself that you have to sort of take it in a constructive way and really, really try to think about what can you learn, how can you become a better human being and let not adversities shape you to the worse. Thank you for that. I think it was a really, really honest and transparent story, but at the same time, very inspiring and, and touching. And I think uh, it's, uh, it's great that you're sharing with everybody because I think people will learn from this. So Christian, um, anything is possible. We want to share positivity, overcome challenges and create one world together. So we try to have as equitable, as fair, to give people as much opportunity as, as possible. Our last question always is, Christian Angemeyer, what is your number one advice to our audience, especially our younger viewers? Well, we went through so many things, like which is practically advice. Like, l look at the world in an optimistic way um, see the dots, how they connect, be open for the world. The world ultimately is an amazing place to be. I think I'm very like, life is awesome. Like, like, and even if you have adversities, which in the moment tell you life is not awesome, it is awesome. Just like take it and, and try to sort of incorporate that. Yeah, and maybe like, I like to end with, because like all of that is not that I came up with that myself. Like I, I had the luck, again, by the way, another, so I have to say a story, like another story which, I could have just dismissed, yeah, like I um, sort of, I'm where I grew up, this is two hours away from Munich, literally. The village was 90 people, the next town was 2,000 people, and then there is nothing for like two hours, like, yeah, and then in two and a half hours, whatever, you're in Munich. So literally in the middle of nowhere. So, so the first time I was in Munich. Uh, you need to tell us the name of this village. <laughs> okay, so the very, very tiny village, the 90 people village is called Triebendorf. Triebendorf. Yeah, you won't even find it, I think you find it on a map, yeah. Uh -huh. And then the town uh, is called Wiesau. Wiesau. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's in the, it's the, the region is called Oberpfalz, so it's a part of Bavaria. So, but the first time I was in Munich, I went into a bookshop, which I think is in the meantime not even there anymore, but it was a very famous one. It was like back then, in the days people were buying physical books can't, people who watch it now can't believe that. Um, so, so I went into this bookstore um, and they had this huge promotion um, for the book Think and Grow Rich yeah. by Napoleon Hill. Um, and uh, in German, Denke nach und werde reich. And it literally, I remember that, you know, when in some movies, like people go into them and you have like, like uh, some wow. eerie oh, voice yeah, or whatever, yeah. angel singing, I was like, Think and Grow Rich. This mm. like sounds like a promise. Mm. And I bought that book. And the title is actually doesn't do it justice because it feels like it's just about money, but mm. it's literally about following your passion and achieving mm. things in life. And that was sort of my first book then out of many, which I was reading to learn about how to be successful and how to have that attitude. But like everything I, we talked about now, everything I believe, is in this one, so, so I would start with that because it's, the good thing with Think and Grow Rich is also that it's from Apollo Hill, is it's not, it's not religious, or it's not spiritual, and sometimes I think when people, for example, read the law of attraction, they may be a little bit pushed back if it's too spiritual because mm. maybe they don't believe it, maybe they think it's too crazy. So, so Think and Grow Rich is a perfect book to start with because it's sort of very neutral, but it gives you sort of the core lessons. So if, if I have one thing, read Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. If you read more things, I would say read Think and Grow Rich. Then I would read The Law of Attraction. Um, wh anybody who wants to learn more about uh, psychedelics, uh, there are two books. There is uh, How to Ch Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan, which is also on Netflix. Yeah, so if you wanna, but the book is amazing. Michael is amazing and, and the Netflix show is amazing. Um, and if you wanna know a little bit more about the spiritual side of psychedelics, um, there is a book uh, by my friend Brian uh, Murarescu, which is called The Immortality Key, which is actually proving that most religions, including Christianity, are actually based on psychedelic experiences, which as a last sentence makes it also very unifying because if you read, I was always very interested in religions, most religions in their core 
are very life positive. What is the key Christian learning? Don't be an asshole. Be nice to others mm. as, you, as you would be to yourself. It's so simple. And then all the bad stuff, which unfortunately organized religion have, they always come when they get organized. Yeah. Because then they become, and we had this discussion right before we started the podcast, like they become a power tool. But if you go to the essence of every religion, if it's Islam, Judaism, um, Hinduism, whatever, it's just try because you're going to fail. Yeah, but try again to be a good human being. Perfect place to end. Christian, thank you. Thank you. Great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much.